everybody. Hello, hello. If you can see me, if you can see me, please type yes. Type yes down in the comments if you can see me right now. If you can hear me clearly, let me make sure everything is connected. Let's make sure everything is working well. Type yes. Hello, Amy Davidson. Type a comment down there if you can hear me clearly, if you can see me clearly, because I have some good stuff for you today that's going to help you pass a GPS exam, because that's what we do. How are you, Amy Davidson in the house? I missed you too, Amy. I missed ya. Aisha, how are you? Welcome back, Aisha. Good to see you on there. Mahan, how are you, Mahan? Welcome to the place to be tonight, Shiva Night. How are you, Shiva? Special shout out to you, Shiva. Babisha, how are you, Babisha? Welcome to the webinar. Welcome to the session. Welcome to the best place to be tonight, where you're going to absorb so much knowledge. You're going to learn the tools, the tricks, the techniques, all the sort of questions that a GPC might potentially ask you on this subject. So we're going to focus on warfaring today, which is a high-risk drug, so it will always come up in your exam. It will always come up. You always got a question on an anticoagulant. It might be warfarin. I and I, you will always get a question. So what I have for you today, which is so interesting, is I'm going to show you where those questions come in the exam. We're also going to look at some past questions that have come up, some questions that GPH has um, sort of asked in the exam, so that I can help you to test practice, get to try these questions. But most importantly, these sessions, as all of you know, these sessions and many other students can testify Majority of the time, they've come on the sessions, they've gone through the sessions, and then they've gone into the exam, and they've sent me messages telling me these sessions help them so much. So, Babisha, welcome. Kiran, how are you? Kiran, good to see you on there. Kiran, Amy says you're looking well. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be back on here with all of you. Osayuki, Osayuki, how are you doing? Amy says, November exam is where it's at. It is where it's at. It's all about November. It's all about November. We have many of you as well that are doing exam next summer. Very good to be on here because you want to start early. So, um, Lam, where is Lam Timothy Long? Man like Lam Timothy, blood, blood, young in the house. Great stuff. Hein Abdullah, how are you, Hein? Hope you're doing good tonight. Tafadzwa, how are you, Marvin? I'm fine, Tafadzwa. Thank you for asking. How are you, Tafadzwa? Great to have you on here. Great to have all of you on here. So um, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you are doing an exam in November? How are you, Mahan? I hope I haven't left anyone out. Just to let you guys know, um, those of you that are not part of the email list, uh, we have a free mailing list. You can join this list and receive daily questions. We get daily calculations and clinical questions. GPH style questions with answers that are going to help you pass, right? So it's a free mailing list. Click on the link. It's in the description and join the list if you haven't yet. So, everyone's doing good, everyone is ready to go. Everyone is ready to go. So I know a number of you are in the exam in November, which is great. And those of you that um, are trainee pharmacists doing it next um, summer, then fantastic. So what I'm gonna do, let me show you guys some of the key things. These slides are so important. This is gonna be a very, very important session. And I'll promise you, like I say to so many students, few weeks ago, we did this uh, motivational session. I went through some of the sessions before the students did the exam in July. And I got a lot of emails after that saying, wow, thank you so much for these sessions, Marvin, because many of those questions came in the exam. So I'm telling you now that the things that I will go through with you now are gonna come up in your exam. So listen carefully, have fun tonight. But remember, this is the most important stuff on warfarin, okay? We're gonna look at warfarin tonight. So great stuff. So if you're ready to go, if you're ready to jump in, learn the stuff, absorb the stuff, smash the exam, give me a one, give me a one, give me a one. Give me one if you're ready for tonight, give me a one. I'm buzzing, I'm excited, I'm ready to go. I love doing this, I love seeing you guys on here. Let's do this. So give me a one if you are ready to go. So I need to make sure my connection is a bit slow, my connection, but it is coming through. Fatima, how are you, Fatima? Fatima is in the house. Who have I not given a shout out to? If I'm not giving a shout out to you, let me know so I could give you a special shout out. And even to your university as well, if you want me to give a shout out to your university. Why not? Even your loved ones, anybody you want me to give a shout out to, I will give them a shout. Amy says, we love you, Marvin. I love you too. All of you, I love all of you. Great stuff. Grapefruit juice is back. 
<laughs> we had a great session with great food juice yesterday, um, last week. So I'm um, gonna have a good one now. So let me get my slides on there, make sure that the slides are sharing, and then I'm gonna show you guys, especially those of you doing the exam in November, this is a, gonna be a very, very important session for you. So let's see if I can share this screen with you. Let's try, let's try, let's try, let's try. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Can you guys see the link? If you can see the link, give me a two. So if this is sharing, just give me a two. If you can see this and it's sharing, just give me a two, give me a two. If you can see the slides, give me a two. So I think it's a little delayed, so I'll see your comments later. Okay, so I'm getting tools now. Fantastic. So um, let's look at what we're gonna cover today very quickly. I'll make that a bit bigger. So um, we are gonna look look at Wolverine. The reason why we're looking at Wolverine is not just because we want to talk about Wolverine and nothing else. We've got nothing else to talk about. No, the reason why we look at Wolverine is because it is a high risk drug and it has a very high chance of coming to your exam. Okay, that's the reason why we're looking at it. Okay, it has a very high chance. It will come up in your exam. You have questions either Wolverine or anticoagulants or INR. So I'm going to show you guys some of the key things that you need to learn, what the GPS likes testing you on, show you where those questions come from in the GPS exam, so that when the exam comes, you will smash it, if you know what I mean. So very quick announcement. We have the free mailing list. Join the free mailing list. It is free. It is free. That's why I keep saying take advantage of this mailing list and just practice all the questions on there. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you still doing? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click that notification bell so that once we are live, then you will get notified. And then share this with your friends. Share this with other pre-reg students. Share this with other trading pharmacists so that they too may benefit. So let's go. Right. So um, this is from the GPHC. So you need to know what the GPHC wants you to learn from anticoagulants. But again, you have different anticoagulants. We're only going to focus on warfarin today. So you need to know what the GPC wants you to learn. So they need you to learn the important POMs, so prescription-only interactions with OTC medications. So make sure that you know what interactions, the prescription-only interactions with warfarin, and then also your OTC interactions with warfarin. Um, you need to know your side effects. So you need to know the side effects of warfarin, and then you need to know how to uh, manage those side effects. That's what they need you to know. So this is not just me. This is not just Marvin saying you need to know this stuff. This is the GPHC, right? This is from the GPHC. That's why I said to you, this is so important. What we're going to cover today, I can promise you, I can promise I'm so confident. I am so confident because I'm so experienced in this and I've supported so many students and I will do the same for you too. Okay, so um, counseling is very important on effective anticoagulants in this case, warfarin for today. Indications, so you need to know the indications of um, warfarin, your different anticoagulants. Again, we're gonna look at indications for warfarin. You need to know what it's used for. You need to know the ranges, the target ranges for each indication. So that's what we're gonna look at today. You also need to know about the dose. So doses are important with all your anticoagulants, but for today, you need to know your doses for warfarin. You need to know what the initial dose is, people. You need to know what the maintenance dose is, and you need to know what to do as well with certain patients, and you need to know the duration, and obviously the different indications that I mentioned. So that's from the GPHC. That's what they require to learn. Now, this is the good news for you. I'm going to show you some areas where questions have come in the exam. How is that? Let me go back before I come in. How many of you like, let me just get some interaction very, very quickly, because I love interacting. How many of you love right now, if I showed you a few places where the GPC normally ask questions on this topic. Type of three, if you want me to just show you right now, some key places where they've asked those questions in the past and they will ask those questions again, because when we did this revision session a few, few months ago, I've got a, a number of students that I do private training with, my private tutees. So all my private tutees, we went through all of these questions and the good thing, that the funniest thing is many students always say, right, oh, you know, they gave this last year, so I don't think they're going to give it again. Or they gave this, ask this question in the summer um, of 2019. And guess what happened, people? Guess what happened, people? The same questions came up in the exam. And all these tutors that I worked with, all these students I worked with a few months ago, people like Amy on the group, so many students all came out of the exam. Those that did the exam in July sending me messages. I could show you guys loads of messages on my phone. I just actually scrolling up with all these students saying, wow, thank you so much. Really appreciate it because those questions came up. 
So that's exactly what I'm going to do for you today. You too will be in that category of happiness, of joy, of excitement, of knowing that, wow, something which I'm learning right now is actually going to come up in my exam. So since I've got loads of threes, let me give you guys what it is, right? So come on, GPS exam questions. Let me make this bigger for you because it's that important. So um, very important, the interaction between um, Meconazole and specifically your aura of Meconazole and Warfarin, such an important interaction. It's gained a lot of popularity in the last few years because of the incident that happened with an old lady that passed away because she had a brain hemorrhage. So um, very important interaction to learn, that specific one. And then um, you add all that anti fungus as well, okay? So Clotrimazole, does it interact or doesn't it interact? So these are questions that have been asked by the GPHC. Right, um, you need to know um what to avoid, right? So what increases the risk of bleeding? What's gonna increase your INR? What sort of drugs will increase your INR? What sort of food supplements will increase your INR? You need to know about the interaction between warfarin and vitamin K. You need to know your INR targets, because I've asked this question in the exam, INR targets and the indications. You need to know um, what's used for, right? So we've spoken about PE, VTE, AF, we need to know all those. Um, your chat vast, we're not going to do chat vast today, but um, we did that in one of our revision sessions before the exam, so you can watch that video. Um, warfarin and bleeding, warfarin doses, important interactions with warfarin. So, people, this specific slide on here, we had a number of questions in the GP exam from this slide. And I promise you, you will get some in November. So, let's get into it, people! Are you ready? If you're ready to start, let me just drop 30 seconds of some music. 30 seconds of some music and then boom, we are ready to go. So if you're ready to start, give me a yes! I'm going to put 30 seconds just to pump us up, let us jump into this session. This GPH to start questions, we're going to go through those at the end of the session. So just give me a yes if you're ready. How are you, Sherrit, in the house? Big up, King Stad, you're not a So, right, if you're ready to come getting yeses, yes, I'm going to give you guys, you guys remember our motivation, right? Remember our motivation tune, our power song. We're going to give you 30 seconds of the power song, and then I'm going to jump straight in into this. Are you ready? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the motivation. Just pump you up. We're ready to go. This is the best place to be tonight. This is where we learn and we make learning fun. So let's look at those key things that will come up in your exam, potential areas for exam questions. So I'm going to go to the first slide. So remember, it's very interactive. I don't do anything that's boring. I'm not a boring person. I hate boring lectures. I hate lectures where you just talk and you just listen. No, I want to say, yes, what is going on, people? What is the prophylactic and treatment dose of PE and VTE for warfarin, right? So what is the dose? The first thing you need to know is the dose. So what is the dose for prophylaxis and treatment of warfarin for say PE, VTE? What is it people type it down? If you know the answer, what is your warfarin dose? In fact, just tell me what is the, what is the initial dose for warfarin? So someone who's just started taking warfarin, what is the initial dose and then you're going to tell me what the maintenance dose is. So, those of you that have been I want to get your answers, especially. So, grapefruit juice is five milligrams initially, once, once two days, okay? Anyone got anything different? Anything different? So, we need to know, first things, you need to know the dose. That's what the GP needs to know. They're going to answer those questions. Share it in the house. Y'all like share it, says five to ten milligrams. Absolutely correct. Grapefruit juice says maintenance dose, three to nine milligrams. If you don't know what the dose is, put a zero so that I know where to focus on. So that I give you a shout out and I make sure I dedicate this stuff to you. So if you don't know for zero, you don't know. I've never heard of it, Bob, and I don't really know what you're talking about. I don't know. Put a zero and I'll help you. I will help you. So, all right. So I'm getting um five to 10. So um, the first thing you need to learn is you need to know your initial dose. So I'm going to few zeros for Mahan. Mahan, this is for you. I'll make sure you learn something today. Pine, the same thing for you. Man like lamb, Timo, Tin Long in the house. 
five to ten, three to nine. Okay, so if you didn't know this stuff, please learn this stuff now because it's high chance from your exam. Maria, watch that. How are you, Maria? How are you, Maria, Aisha, Karisha? Oh, wow. All of you have loads of zeros. Fantastic. I like that because when I see a zero, I know you're going to leave this place with a lot of good content. A lot of good content. I'm going to help you out. I am going to help you out because that's what I do. Okay, so Farin says, I thought I had to tell the those. Watch this space, Farin. I'm going to explain that clearly so that you understand this stuff clearly. You're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. You are correct, but I'm going to explain that to you very clearly now. So, Farin! Yes, very good. Let's get into this paper. So you guys are all correct. So the first thing you need to know is that the mental, that there is an initial dose of warfarin. So when someone starts taking warfarin, say someone has prescribed warfarin, you normally give them between five milligrams to 10 milligrams, okay? Five milligrams to 10 milligrams, and you do that for one day, right? So it is five to 10 for one day, and then going into what Farin was talking about, Farin, this is where you come in. So it's five between five to 10 milligrams for day number one, and then based on the patient's INR, which Farin just mentioned over there, quick stuff, Farin, based on the person's INR, then you will adjust the dose accordingly. Say, for instance, if you gave between 5 to 10, if it was too high and so the patient had a risk of bleeding, then you could reduce it. So if you started, say, about 9 milligrams of warfarin and that patient seems to show signs of bleeding, maybe there's some nose bleed or something which tells you that one wow, person is bleeding, unexplained bruising, then you obviously reduce that dose, right? So it's between five to 10 as an initial dose, but based on that patient's INR, then you adjust it to know exactly what dose to give them. Great stuff. What about the maintenance dose? You guys had three to nine, and that's correct. So once you're given your initial dose, which is normally higher than your maintenance dose, then once you've found that a range where the patient is maintained on, the fine, the stable on that, there's no bleeding, there's no risk on this, it's controlling um, the patient's condition effectively, then you maintain them on the dose, which is normally three to nine, nine milligrams. So three to nine milligrams, remember that as your maintenance dose, and then five to 10 milligrams, remember that as your initial dose. Now, the good thing is for most people, say so elderly patients, for instance, you normally start with a, a lower initial dose. So don't talk about five to 10. If you have an elderly patient or someone who doesn't need rapid anticoagulation, then you could start on a lower initial dose. Does this make sense? Now we always have a buzzword. Every time we learn something new, we need to put a buzzword down. So what's our buzzword? If you learned something new today, I want you to put boom. So if you learned something, you're like, wow, that was a zero. So all of you that put zeros before, please put boom, because you just learned something that is going to help you succeed in the exam. Vibonic Wolf says, hi, Marvin. How are you? Vibonic Wolf, man like Tassin. Great stuff. So give me a boom if you didn't know this stuff and you know this stuff now then I feel proud and I know, yes, I am using the time effectively with you. So notes for you, initial dose five to 10 milligrams on day one, then subsequent doses depend on the iron. Now, like man, like Farin said, our maintenance dose, three to nine milligrams daily, taken at the same time each day. So that's very important as well. You take warfarin at the same time each day. For most people, they take them around six o'clock, so between sort of five to seven, most of the time you hear 6 p.m., 6 p.m., 6 p.m. But um, it doesn't necessarily say it has to be at 6 p.m. as long as you always take at the same time each day. But 6 p.m. seems to be a very convenient time for most people. So normally around 6 p.m. each day, you take at the same time each day. One, once a day. Okay, once a day, 6 p.m., that's enough. And then your lower initial dose, as I mentioned, elderly patients, you give them a lower dose or anyone who doesn't require any sort of rapid, rapid, rapid anticoagulation. So great. So our um, next question I want to ask you guys is the indications. So you need to know your indications. Warfarin has got a lot of indications. So what you need to know is what are the different indications? Then you need to know what are the target INR ranges. So for each indication, you have an INR target. Okay. So previously we talked about INR ranges, but the good thing is it's not ranges anymore. They talk about INR values. Okay. Target values. So let me know in the comments, what are, tell me the different types of indications for warfarin. What do you use warfarin to treat? Farin says, makes sense, thank you. I told you, Farin, I've got your back. If there's anything you're not sure about, I'm going to make sure you understand. And if you have any questions, ladies and gentlemen, please ask your questions because that's why I'm here. Right, we've got my hands. Does maintenance dose after initial dose depend on INR as well then? Yes. Yes, it does. Well, when you have your initial dose, you don't really know what it's going to be, right? So it could be so high. The maintenance dose is normally like the same. 
the same sort of range. We have between three and nine, and it is true, it depends on iron hour. That's why for most people, even when the maintenance was at the beginning, you're gonna monitor them very often. So at the beginning, they might have them every or any, every other day. You have to measure the iron hour every other day, and alternate days, iron hour, iron hour. And then when they're a bit more stable, then you could increase that interval. And then when they're even more stable and maintained on this dose, it's fixed, there's no problem, maintenance, no issues. Then you could sort of review them or do iron out every three months. So it's very cool. You start one or two days, you monitor them. If they're fine, good, they can stay for a few more weeks. Monitor them. If they're fine, no big deal. Every three months, you're going to come back in and do your iron out. Does that make sense, my hand? Does that ask your question? Does that ask your question, my hand? Let me know. Great food juice in the house, B T E A F M I. Correct. So these are all indications. Share it. DVT, AF, Mechanical Prosthetic Hardware. Fantastic, Sherwood. Fantastic. Go. Cuba, AFPE, correct. All correct. All correct. So, um, most of the time, the main ones we look at is obviously PE, isn't it? Pulmonary embolism and venous thromboembolism, VTE. Also, you got AF, and you can use for treatment and you can use for prophylaxis as well. TIA, correct. So, let's look at this very quickly. All correct. So, now what I want to, what, what I want to ask you is, the first thing you need to do is you need to know what the indication is, which you guys clearly know. The second thing you need to know is what is the target range? If I ask you, for example, what is the target value? What is the INR target value for AF? What are you going to say? What are you going to say to me? AF people, what is the target INR value for AF? What is it? Great food juices, meat trust, the noses, that's correct as well. But what is the target iron value for atrial fibrillation? So if someone had atrial fibrillation, what is the target iron value you're gonna give to them? What is it? Vibronic wolf in the house, 2.5 grateful juice, 2.5 cuba, 2.5. If you don't know, put a zero so that I know so that I can help you. Great stuff. So 2.5. Man like Lamb Timothy Long in the house says 2.5. Osa Yuki representing for Kingston University. You know the score, Osa Yuki. You know the rest. Great stuff. Share with good stuff. So lots of 2.5. So that's what you need to know. Okay. So you need to know the indications, but you also need to know INR target ranges. But you know, I'm so good. I'm so there helpful trying to make sure that I make things easy for you. I make them enjoyable. So I've made a lovely table for you. You'll be happy to know, ladies and gentlemen. A lovely table to help you. So this is my technique. This is what I do. So the main thing you need to learn is actually 3.5. Okay, so you have a target INR value of 2.5 or 3.5. Okay, 2.5 or 3.5. Majority of them are all 2.5s, right? So DVT treatment of DVTP, AF, cardioversion, mitral stenosis, all of that stuff is mainly 2.5. So 2.5 is the most popular INR target. Okay, very popular iron target value is 2.5. The way I remember this stuff is 3.5 because if you learn 3.5, then you know everything else falls on that 2.5. So I just remember that DVT and PE recurrence, that's why that's in red. It's a very important word and GP to test you on that. If the DVT is recurrent, that means that they have it all the time, all the time they're having it again and again, and it's a recurrent DVT or PE, then it's 3.5. All right, if it's just the first time um, DVT or PE, you're looking at 2.5. If it's recurrent, then it's 3.5. So 3.5 is easy to learn. So I just learned the two things, recurrent DVT or PE, and I also learned mechanical prosthetic hard valve. Once you know those two, you're fine, because everything else is 2.5. And then the way to do it is you're always um, a range of 0.5. You could go up 0.5, and that's fine. So, so say, for instance, um, a treatment for DVT could be 2.5, or it could be up to 3.0, okay? So as long as you're within 0.5 of the target value then it's fine all right so you could you could treat dvt between two and three because although the target um value is 2.5 you can go 0.5 down or 0.5 up so really anyone else got that you want to treat for dvt you could maintain the inr between two and three great stuff people great stuff hope that table helps but that's a good table, good way to remember your INR values and your targets all, I mean, INR target ranges and your conditions all in one table. So very big part comes up in the exam all the time, interactions. The thing about warfarin, it's interactions are so, so important. High, there's a high chance you still get present from warfarin interactions. The key interactions I'm talking about, the key ones that normally come up. So ladies and gentlemen, what are some of the key interactions of warfarin? What are some of the most important interactions? 
what interactions do you have? Put them down. Let's see. Let's see who knows the interactions, who knows what from an interaction. The most important ones, the most common ones, those that are likely to come up in the exam. I've got Fenitoin by Grapefruit Juice. Babisha says Miconazole and Warfarin. Absolutely important. MHRA. MHRA one, so important. Remember that stuff. Vodka from Grapefruit Juice. My girl, like Amy Davidson, Amy Davidson, you know the rest, Amy, you know the score, Telegram group massive. <laughs> Amy says that in oral gel, and it's so important she's got oral gel, because when you look at the literature, the literature says meconazole in general, so topical meconazole, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's an oral gel, whether it's a cream. However, the oral gel, the systemic, because that's going into your mouth, that's the most important of the interactions. So though the MHRA says be very careful with um, other forms of meconazole, your dactarin, that the oral gel is systemic absorption, so that's the one with the most problem. I got steroids, great pomegranate juice, good stuff, good stuff, carbamazepine, quinolones, all of this stuff, all correct, NSAIDs, alcohol. Now let me ask you a question because someone has put alcohol. What type of alcohol are we talking about? What type of alcohol is it? excessive alcohol is it just normal alcohol what do we mean when we say alcohol if someone asks that question the pharmacy okay so um right so is that interaction alcohol can i drink at all can i am i allowed to drink more for me can i even have a little bit of alcohol what are you going to say what are you going to say to that person so i'm um, just to clarify this um this is the chapter where you need to know your enzyme inhibitors and enzyme inducers and if you know your inhibitors and you know your inducers Life is easy when it comes to interactions with warfarin because most of these interactions increase INR, okay? They increase the exposure of warfarin, most interactions, right? But you have a number of them that also your inducers, so they do the opposite. So um, let's see what God show it says, drinking, binge drinking, correct, show it, binge drinking. So binge drinking, is that an inducer or an inhibitor? It's an inducer, okay? So... Excessive drinking or excessive alcohol is actually an inducer, right? So it's going to increase the breakdown of warfarin. So you have to adjust that dose. You may have to increase the dose of warfarin for someone who drinks too much, all right? So if someone has been drinking, they may have to increase the dose of insulin of warfarin because that's an inducer. While for someone that's on a macrolide, like a erythromycin, these are all inhibitors, right? They increase the risk of bleeding with warfarin. So you may have to reduce that dose of warfarin. So it's important to know when to increase the dose of warfarin and when to reduce the dose of warfarin. And one of the quickest ways to know that we cover all of this in detail on the combo course. So if you guys have not heard of the combo course, the combo course is an amazing course. People like Amy Davidson can tell you about this course, all of this uh, vibrant group, all this one. They have all these acronyms, we have crazy acronyms, and Amy has just put some of the acronyms there from the course as well for you. So these are all, you need to know your enzyme inducers and you need to know your inhibitors. And once you know that, then all the interactions in terms of medications, your pump medication that we spoke about will be easy for you to understand, all right? So make sure you learn your inducers, make sure you learn your inhibitors. There's so many good acronyms that we have in, even on the course that will just help you smash that in two seconds. Great food says PPIs also work on anticoagulants and antiplatelets. Yes, yes, that's correct, that's correct. So. Great stuff, great stuff. So before we get into the next one, let me just check. Let me check for you. Important interactions, as I mentioned, learn your inhibitors, learn your inducers. Then your food interactions. Food interactions are so important with warfarin. Because not all drugs really interact with foods. For instance, you can look at maybe some, some antidepressants, for instance, like mouse, for instance, interact with foods a lot. But, uh, it, but warfarin is one of those drugs that has a lot of food interactions. Um, food supplements, enteral feeds, anything that contains vitamin K that interacts with warfarin, right? Reduces um, the concentration of warfarin. Um, large amounts of green vegetables or green tea. So when we talk about green leafy vegetables, can you guys give me some examples? When we talk about green leafy vegetables, please give me some examples. These are questions that come up in the exam, people. You need to know this stuff. You need this stuff. Thank you, Amy, for putting all of these down because these are all um, enzyme inhibitors and inducers and all the interact. Vibonic is the combo course is really helpful. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you, Vibonic, good man like Tassin. We give 100% on that course, every single thing. We there for like eight weeks. It's all intense. It's so much fun. Basically, you learn, but you learn having fun at the same time. 
So I love to see this because it's important that you know what your green leafy vegetables are. That has come up in an exam question as well. I think it came up even in July. So watch out for that, okay? Kale, right? Kale, spinach, all of those broccoli, Brussels sprouts, any vegetable that looks green, right? If it looks green and it looks leafy or looks green, then that's your green leafy vegetable. Spinach, correct. So um, Aisha, what is Aisha says? I've just bought the combo course today. Have you, Aisha? Congratulations. Aisha, welcome. You know what the great thing about the combo course is? Is that you're not just buying a course because it's boring, isn't it? Just to buy a course. You're buying a family. You're literally, isn't it? Am I right? You are buying a family because once in the course and you join the Telegram group where you have all the people, it is fun, right? So you have a lot of support. Amy says the combo course is amazing. You know the rest. We have lots of reviews on that course. You can read the reviews if you go to previous short course reviews. You can see those reviews. But yes, great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. So, right, you make so many friends. It's great. It's a great course. It's not just a course. You're getting everything on there. So um, examples of green leafy vegetables you need to know. Major changes in diet. So you always advise patients not to make any major changes. So it's not really don't make any changes. So you can't tell them, hey, listen, don't start eating green vegetables. So don't eat anything. It's major changes. So if someone wants to eat a lot of salads, right, or a lot of green stuff, or they went on this green diet, where all of a sudden your consumption of maybe once a week of eating vegetables becomes like seven days a week, three times a day, I'm all green. You know when you're so green, you start looking like the Hulk. Right? When you start, once you start looking like the Hulk, that is a major change in your diet. Right? So at that stage, no, that is very dangerous because now you're taking loads of vitamin Ks that are going to interact with Wolverine. They okay, can stop the efficiency of it. And so you don't want that. You want them to avoid major changes, major changes. Alcohol, it has to be chronic alcohol that's an inducer. Well, just normal alcohol is an inhibitor. So know the difference between chronic alcohol and just normal alcohol drinking. Okay? So chronic alcohol is an inducer. Pomegranate juice is one that most people don't know about. Everyone seems to know about cranberry juice, cranberry juice, cranberry juice. But many people don't really know about pomegranate juice. So it interacts with warfarin. So watch out for those, okay? And the meconazole. So these are some of the main ones. The list is not exhaustive, as you guys know, because all those enzyme inhibitors and inducers that you mentioned all interact with warfarin. But these are the ones that you tend to see a lot in exam questions. Okay, so what is the most common side effects of warfarin? Grapefruit juice says, does vitamin K leafy veg decrease INR since it inhibits warfarin? What do you guys think? What's that going to do? If you have vitamin K, what's it going to do to your INR? Is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? Let me know, let me know. Is it going to increase or decrease? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. If you have vitamin K, it stops the effects of warfarin. What's going to happen to your INR, people? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is the INR going to go up or is it going to go down? For grapefruit juice. For grapefruit juice. So it's going to go down, isn't it? It's going to go down because the more warfarin you have in your system, the higher the iron. And I'm going to give you guys a very good acronym that can help you. Those of you on the course, you're reading this acronym, I think. But so you think about it like if you have more warfarin, then your iron out goes up, right? Higher risk of bleeding. So if you give anything to anybody that stops the, um, the concentration of warfarin or stops in, in your body, which vitamin K does, it's an antidote to warfarin. It counters the effects of warfarin, then that means that you're gonna have less bleeding and you're gonna have a lower iron up, right? So very important, but it's a good question, great food juice. Very good question. I hope that's clear. Is that clear, great food juice? Let me know. Let me know if that answers your question. Let me know and make sure that all questions are answered. That's exactly how we do this. Everyone is gonna be seen to. Okay, so um, that's fine. So, what is the most common side effect of warfarin? The most common side effects. What is the most common side effect of warfarin? You have, warfarin's got loads of side effects, but what is the most common one? The number one side effect that when you hear warfarin, you just think, oh, yes. So Lam Timothy says, blue painful, painful skin rash. So that's not a very common, but it's correct. Man like Lam Timothy Long is always correct, by the way, people. Let's remember that. But this is not a common effect, but yes, blue toe and skin rash, what we call calciphylaxis. Yes, that's correct, especially people have got renal problems. But yes, but it's not the common one that won, but you are correct. It's one of them, and that will come up in your exam. Blue toe especially makes it stand out, but that's correct. Hemorrhage is what I wanted to see. Hemorrhage, right? Because that's the advice we give many patients, right? So um, bleeding is um, probably the most common side effect, and that's why we do a lot with your INR. Great stuff. All correct people, good stuff. So hemorrhage is the most common one. Um, the way you talk to patients about hemorrhage, you don't tell a patient, oh, listen, you might get hemorrhage. If you get any hemorrhage, you need to let your doctor know. No! 
They're going to be, what is hemorrhage? It's too scientific for me to understand. Help me out, young man. Then he goes, all right, sorry. So I'll just, I'll just realize you're 95 years old. So let me break that down. In a patient-friendly language is what we do, right? So you're not going to say hemorrhage, the common side effect. You say, um, if you notice any nosebleeds or if it's any blood in your urine or if it's an sort of unexplained bruising on the arm or over your body, then you must let your doctor know, right? So you don't say, hey, you got hemorrhage, you got to let your doctor know. No, no, don't do that. You tell them you've got any nosebleeds, you know, you've got any blood in your urine. That's how people understand. That's the language they understand, patient-friendly language. So that's my mnemonic for you. When your iron out is high, you bleed and die. You go down the course. I, when your iron out is high, you will bleed and you will die. So that's going to help man like, who was the one that asked the question? It was, who was the one that asked the question? It was grapefruit juice. That will help you as well, the iron out. Iron out is high, you bleed and die, okay? And then, yes, frequency not known, blue toe syndrome, all the stuff you guys mentioned, all correct. Amy has got that. When iron is high, you bleed and die from the top because you know that till Amy, you know the score. Yeah, like Amy. Correct, correct. Shall we say if a patient changes the lifestyle, diet, do we refer them urgently or GP referral? So, share it. Right. So, if a patient changes the lifestyle, you obviously need to tell them. It's not, it's, not, it's not urgent unless they're showing symptoms or the bleeding and things like that. Or they're having some sort of, yes, if they're having probably they won't bleed, yeah, because it's the opposite. But if they um, change the lifestyle, then you don't, it's not an urgent referral in that sense, but you definitely need to tell them they need to check the INR. So you have to educate them to tell them these, this change could affect your INR, and this change affect your INR, this is the potential risk. Your warfarin may not work effectively, so that could either lead to thromboembolism or to it could lead to a clot. I'm trying to use patient friendly language. So, someone came to me and I've changed my lifestyle, my diet. You need to tell them by changing that lifestyle, for instance, if now they're eating loads of greens, if you eat loads of greens, that's going to affect warfarin. So, you're not going to get the effects of warfarin, which then puts you at risk of getting a clot, having a blood clot. So, in that case, I want to recommend that you speak to your doctor about this to make sure that your INR is checked. Someone needs to check your INR and make sure that you're still well controlled. Okay? But yes, you definitely have to refer them. Um, I wouldn't say urgent is such urgent referral, but you definitely have to refer them to the doctor and remind them that the INR needs to be monitored. Is that okay? Share with Share it from Kingston. Okay, great. So um, what about pregnancy? So anything about warfarin and pregnancy? If a pregnant lady comes to you, she's been taking warfarin and then she's pregnant now, and she asks you, can pregnant women take warfarin? Yes or no? Let me know, people, what you think. Can pregnant women take Take warfarin. Share with it. Thanks and got it. Great stuff, sharing. Share it. Great stuff. Sherry says, no, they can't take warfarin. It's contraindicated. Cuba says, no, not given to pregnant women. Lam Timothy says, no. Lots of no's, 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 no's. Yes, yeah, so it's um um teratogenic, right? It crosses the, the placenta. Okay, it crosses your placenta, so um you don't give warfarin especially in the first and third trimester. So you, you read um, literatures that say, yes, especially your first and your third trimester, but generally most books will tell you, don't even give it at all, right? If you have safer drugs to give, why give warfarin, okay? Because it is teratogenic. So you can't say, okay, yeah, but I could give it in the second trimester. No, don't do that, just avoid it, okay? You give them LMWH. Man like Lance Timothy has mentioned that LMWH, you give them your heparins because they're safe in pregnancy. Okay, they do not cross your placenta, right? So it's very important that you know this stuff, people, because this comes up in your exams. Okay, give LMWH instead, right? But if you have to give it, sometimes you have no choice. That patient has to have warfarin. Then they have to be monitored. Okay, so if that happens, but there's no other alternative, they have to take that warfarin for whatever reason. Then um, they need to be monitored constantly. So um, great stuff. All correct, guys. Good stuff. Good stuff. So avoid, um, but it is safe in breastfeeding. So although it's not safe in pregnancy, it is safe in breastfeeding because only small amounts get into your breast milk. So it's not that bad if you're breastfeeding. Um, so what do you monitor with warfarin and how often do you monitor? So what do we monitor with warfarin? GPH needs you to know what you monitor and they need you to know what you do with those results as well. So what do we monitor? We've been talking about it the whole time, talking about it. So what is, what do you monitor with warfarin? And how often do you monitor this, by the way? So what do you monitor and how often? 
let us see. So I'm going to show you guys the answer. I think it's a delay in your comments. I, I think your comments are coming up, but there is a delay. So um, you need to know how often you need to monitor. You need to know, first of all, you monitor INR. You monitor your INR. And then you need to know how often you need to monitor your INR. So I mentioned that earlier. So you normally start daily or alternate days at the beginning of the treatment. And then if that's more stable, then um, you do have longer intervals. And then you get to the point where you can do it every three months. So um, the many patients now that are stable and well for and you sort of do the INRs now every three months. They don't need to do it every day or every other day. It's just at the beginning where you need to do it every day or every other day. But um, generally, once it's stable, then um, you have an INR every three months. Great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. Every three months, every three months, yes, your liver function, um, you have to do all those tests, but I just wanted to get your INR. Great, great, great. So next one, uh, what is the antidote for warfarin? What is the antidote? A common question that comes up down the GPHC um, exam, and it's coming more and more and more, are your antidotes for anticoagulants. So we're not gonna cover the other anticoagulants. Here we have them on the combo course. We have things like your Vivaroxaban, your Dabigatrans, you need to know what the antidote for these drugs are. Um, say heparin, for instance, glutamine. But if I ask you what is the antidote for vitamin K, what do you say? What's the antidote for warfarin, what do you say? Warfarin, yes, it's vitamin K, and the scientific name is phytomenadione. I like calling it menadione, because it sounds like so chemistry, isn't it? But yes, phytomenadione, great, so vitamin K. So um, please learn about your antidotes, and many people confuse this as well with heparin. When they ask them what's the antidote for heparin, they go, oh, vitamin K. Vitamin K is just for warfarin. Just for warfarin. All your other anticoagulants have different antidotes. Remember that. Don't say I didn't tell you this because many students get it wrong. You go like, oh, what's the antidote for um, enoxaparin? And they go, oh yeah, yeah, I know what it is, it's vitamin K. No, it's not, it's vitamin. All right, so that's on the course in detail. Right, so um, vitamin K, good stuff. Phytomenadione, phytomenadione, great stuff. Okay, what advice do you give? So you need to know your patient advice, questions, exam questions. Remember, I said to you, the things that we're focusing on are especially things that come up in your exam. So I, don't, I can't even stress how important, how important, how important this session is. And those of you that don't believe me yet, you will believe me soon. Right? When you sit down and you start answering past questions, exam questions, every time questions come on this topic, you will see that it's going to be something we've touched on this slide. So take the C seriously. So what, do you, what advice do you give for patients on warfarin? What is your patient and care advice for warfarin? Paul, that's what you need to know. You need to know your patient and care advice as well. So there's quite a few things to tell the patient, but I'm just gonna give you some of the key ones. First of all, you need to have a treatment booklet. You can give that to the patient, to the carer. Patients in the carrier just alert cards with them just in case anything happened. People or they had an accident or something. People need to know that they're taking on warfarin, so they need to carry that card with them at all time. Uh, advice of the timing, we mentioned that already, is um, once a day at the same time each day. Advice about the food and the lifestyle interactions, things that can interact. Tell them about the signs of bleeding, let them know the signs of bleeding. So a bleeding nose, um, unexplained bruising, or blood in the urine. Those are all the signs that they need to look out for, right? So these, so this is sort of counseling that you give to patients on warfarin. Yes, please learn your patient and counseling advice. Very important. Very, very important. So I've got um, great food with dental care. That's fine, exactly. So any procedure that we've done, that's why you need to have that card with you at all times and let them know the dentist, anyone that's going to do anything where it involves bleeding, they need to know your warfarin, all right? Um, Sherwood says, importance of the yellow book and regular INR checks, correct. All correct, all correct, all correct. So um, another thing, a question that comes up, you need to learn is how the tablets present themselves in the pharmacy, your different strengths and the color of each pack. So generally when you speak to patients, you don't really, you try to speak to them in patient-friendly language, which means that if you're telling a patient to take warfarin one or warfarin three milligrams, you won't tell them, okay, you take your warfarin um, one milligram in the morning with the, uh, at 6 p.m. with your warfarin three milligrams. You tell them the color of the tablet, right? So you take either this color with this color. That makes it easy and the GPC needs you to know that so that if you're giving patients advice, you will know what to tell them. So if I ask you guys, what are the colors? So let's go to the first one. What is the color of, how many strengths are there? How many strengths of war for me? We've got four, correct? So I'm seeing, I'm seeing all your answers there. So I've got, um, Babisha says three milligrams blue, correct. Um, one milligram brown, yes. Grapefruit juice says white to pink. Not too sure about that one. Um, Five milligrams is pink, correct. If you don't know the colors, please put a zero, let me just make sure. 
So Cuba has put everything down there. One milligram is brown, that's correct. Three milligrams is blue. Five milligrams is pink. But Cuba has left one strength. You have four different strengths. There's one more strength, Cuba, and it's what Babisha has on here. So 0.5 milligrams is white. So um, please learn your different strengths and the colors of what for me, very important, may come up in exam. So 0.5 milligrams white, one milligram brown, three milligrams blue, and five milligrams pink. Very, very important. Okay. Now, 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 this is the place. Before I get into this one, this is probably going to be the last um, part of um, Warframe, and then we're going to do some GPS style questions. Now, the reason why I'm going to stop here is because this part is so important, your INR, and knowing what to do. They like asking questions on INR, and if they ask you questions on INR, it could be from this next slide. So I'm going to give us a 30 seconds pump pump before we jump into this next slide. I'm going to give us a 30 second pump up. By the way, if you're enjoying this session and you're learning something new, please give me a one, give me a one, smash the like button. I didn't ask you guys, please smash the like button if you're enjoying the stuff and you're learning something new. Please smash the like button so that we get more likes, so that we get seen more by more students and we can send this out. Share that stream if you can. Invite your colleagues, tell them, listen, what are you doing? We have these live sessions every Wednesday, free, good information, quality content all for free make the most of it so great stuff so hit the like button hit the like button hit the like button and i love you all i appreciate all of you for doing that thank you so much all of you so we're gonna get 30 seconds 30 seconds then boom we could go straight in so 30 seconds let's do this people Okay, we're back, just a little break. I'll stretch, relax, so I can absorb the information, right? Absorb the information. I like to do that because I like giving little mental breaks, process things, and then boom, we're ready to go. So this is so important now, right? So I and R, you need to know what actions to take. So part of your GPC, this is a high weighting requirement, okay? Your high weighting topics. They talk about knowing your blood ranges, knowing like ranges, and then also knowing how to interpret results. And then knowing what to do when things happen. So what do you do if the INR is too high? What do you do if the INR is too low? What do you do if the patient is bleeding? What do you do if they're not bleeding, but they've got high INR? What do you do if they have a very a major bleed? What do you do, what do you give them? How do you rectify that? So that's what a GPC needs you to know. They don't, they don't just need you to know, all right, um, a high end INR and too much warfarin can cause bleeding, good. But next thing they're gonna ask is, okay, if, it, if the patient starts bleeding, what do you do to sort it out? Okay, so that's the second part of this, okay? So you have to know it causes bleeding, then you need to know what to do, sort it out. And so the next part is so important, but as usual, I made it so easy for you, like I always do, make it easy for you, make you love it, make sure you enjoy it. So what I've done is I've made a nice, condense it in a nice, lovely, simple table for you. You do get questions on here, so please, please, please learn this table I'm about to show you because you're never going to see it presented in such a sweet, easy, digestible, absorbable format. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. This is it. This is your time. Right. This table is what you need to know. So I'm going to go through this very quickly. Very important because this comes up in the exam. So um, you have, the main things you have to look at is bleeding. Cover this in detail on the course. All of you guys have this stuff. But um, bleeding, you need to ask yourself two things. Is the patient bleeding or are they not bleeding? Very important. So you need to know, are they bleeding or not? Bleeding, yes or no? First question you ask yourself. Second question, INR, right? Is the INR above eight or is it below eight? Once you know the answer to these two questions, then you could tell, you could know exactly what to do. So if a patient's got major bleeding, so you don't even worry about INR when it comes to major bleeding. You don't even need to think about if it's major bleeding, like serious, serious bleeding. Don't even worry about INR. Don't even worry about anything. You need to stop the warfarin straight away, and then you give them vitamin K slow IV injection. And you could also add dried prothrombin complex and also plasma, okay, frozen plasma. So basically, if the patient's got major bleeding, 
just major bleeding, you stop warfarin. You stop warfarin and you give them IV vitamin K. And this is the only time during major bleeding where you can also give an addition to your IV vitamin K. You could give dried prothrombin complex or frozen plasma. Okay, I'm saying that slow because it's so important. All right, major bleeding, IV vitamin K but is the only one where you could give dry protrombin complex. Just in case I ask you that question, you will know you only use dry protrombin complex in major bleeding. Now, INR. If the INR is above eight, you could have two situations where the patient has a high INR and there is bleeding, or they could have an, a high INR, but luckily there's no bleeding. So what do you do? So if the INR is above eight and there is bleeding, as a general rule, I'll tell you this as a general rule, with every sort of bleeding, with all bleedings, you give IV vitamin K. With all bleeding, I'm making it so easy for you people because if you feel that by yourself, you go like, oh, I don't understand what's going on. So I'm making it so easy for you, all right? With all bleeding, if you ever hear any question where a patient's actually bleeding, you always, 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 always give them IV vitamin K, regardless if they're bleeding, IV vitamin K. So if the INR is above eight and the patient is bleeding, a minor bit of bleeding, then you stop warfarin. Because the bleeding, what do you give them? IV vitamin K. And then you restart the, uh, once the INR is below five. Okay, so you restart warfarin once the INR has come down below five. If the INR is above eight, but there is no bleeding, remember I said you only give IV vitamin K when there is bleeding. In this case, it's a high INR is above eight, but there's no bleeding. So you don't have to give IV vitamin K, but you give oral vitamin K. It's very interesting because it is actually IV vitamin K, but you give it in an oral form, okay? So it's IV, but given orally. Licensed, but if it's if the INR is above eight, you give them vitamin, IV vitamin, but you give them oral. Does that make sense? And then you'll be started with INR less than five. If it's between five to eight and there is bleeding, remember what I said every time you have bleeding, you give IV vitamin K. Every time you have bleeding, you give IV vitamin K. So in this case, it's between five to eight, minor bleeding you give them vitamin K, and then you restart the INR when it's less than five. And the final one, if it's between five to eight, there's no bleeding. So it's just like the top one, but this time there's no bleeding, then just withhold the doses, one or two doses of warfarin, and then you reduce the subsequent maintenance doses. So I won't go so deep into this, but this table says it all. Everything is put together for you. Very important to know what to do. This does come up in your exam. So great stuff. Is that all all right? I know it's quite a lot of that table, but is that table easy to understand? Is that Exclamation clear, give me one, give me one. If that makes sense, you think, wow, okay, fine, that is cool. That is cool, it's easy to understand. Maybe I just have to go through a few times, but it doesn't mean that bad, Marvin. Then give me one, give me one, give me a one. Give me one, people, and make sure that you're understanding this stuff. Great stuff. So I think we're coming to the end. Now we are going to go into GPHC style questions. Yes, to round this up, people. We're going to go into GPS and start questions. We're going to answer some of the questions to make sure that you've been listening, you've been learning, you've been absorbing some stuff. Always when I give questions, there might be one question that just out of the blue that we've not covered here, but um, it's just a test to see whether you know some stuff out of this session, okay? So you are normally testing on things that we've covered, but then I'll also give you something that I'm not mentioned just to see whether you know this offhand or previously. So, especially for those of you doing it in November. So, are you ready for GPS start questions? If you're ready, give me a one. Give me a one for GPS start questions. Remember the rules of the game. Don't put your answers down until I ask you for the answer. So, once you get your answer, just out of respect for everyone that's here, don't put your answers. It might distract someone. So, um, once I ask for the answer, we just got three questions. I think three or four questions, and um, we're going to take thirty seconds. Okay, we're going to take thirty seconds for each question, and then. Boom, all right. Amy says, haha, my silly comments keep staying on the screen. All right, I'm gonna keep this one even. <laughs> I'll take another comments. The no silly comments. Your comments are great, Amy. Your comments are always great. So, question number one. Question number one, you're gonna have 30 seconds. Let me just set my timer. We're gonna jump in 30 seconds. And uh, remember, these are GPH style questions. So if you can answer these questions, you need to give yourself that pat on the shoulder, on the back, because you are already one step close to passing this exam. 
So let's look. Where is my timer? Where is my timer? I've just brought that up. Stopwatch right there. Ready to go. First question. Question number one. You have 30 seconds. Let's go. Right, people, what's your answer for this question? What's your answer? Come along if you have this thread. What is your answer for this question? Question number one was the answer. What is the answer? What is the answer for question number one? So we do this um a lot. Um, I, a couple of students on my private my private tutees where we um on the private tutee groups, it's, not, it's different from the course. So the course will cover a lot of content. But with the private tutees, we sort of apply the knowledge into practice. So it's a lot of questions and a lot of case studies. So we'll do a lot of these questions and so many questions, like so many questions. And um, we love asking questions in INR because it's, they're always very interesting, the answers you can get. So I'm getting Bs, 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 show it B, 2.5, great. So lots of Bs, fantastic, well done, people. It is B, so that is good. So let's look at the next one, let's look at the next one. You've got 30 seconds. I hope you can all see the question and the okay, yeah, that's that seems all right. All right, let's stop, people. What's your answer to this question? What is your answer to this question? Exam style question, what answer do you have? What answer do you have for question number two? Robbins had a 3.5, it is 2.5. I'm guessing that was the previous question. So I'm getting lots of C's for question number two. C's for Mal, C from Grapefruit, Lam, Timothy Long, C, C, Sheep C, great, great, low to C's, low to C's, low to C's. So let's see what the answer is. In this, let me make sure that you guys have been listening and you've been learning. But if you've got this right, please give yourself a whoop whoop because this is a potential exam question. You've had questions like this. So um, if you got C, well done. That means you're ready for the next question. So the next question, your 30 seconds start. Let me set this timer starts now so these are one of those questions i did not mention this it is one of those that i just took out and it has come in the exam just to see if you know this stuff especially those of you doing it in november that's for you i know those of you doing it in july you may not have seen this some of you probably learned what we're teaching here for the first time amy says is it all about vitamin k because of no bleeding exactly exactly you have no bleeding, you don't give IV vitamin K. Or our vitamin K if the iron is higher than eight, but there is no bleeding. If there was bleeding correct, Amy, it would be IV vitamin K spot on. Very spot on on that one. All right, people, what's your answer for this question? What is your answer? Amy says, sorry, I bottled it in July. No, you didn't bottle it. No, 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 definitely not. My advice to everyone is do this exam when you feel all right, okay? You never rush the GPS exam. I would, I've had a few tutees as well, and we went through stuff, and there was one or two that decided they wanted to do it in November because they just didn't feel confident at all. And they asked me, what do you think, Marvin? I said, yes, you should. If you don't feel confident, nothing wrong with that. Take your time, there's no rush. Take your time and do when the time feels right. That's what I say. But it's an important exam, you don't have to rush. It's just a matter of a few months anyway. So spend more time, go through stuff, get that confidence, 
stay here and then we'll get you to succeed. So I think it's a, it's a brave decision and I think it's the right decision. You make that decision, it is good. You better do that than go to the exam and then regret it later. It's easier to make that decision in advance as opposed to do the exam and then you cry later. Does that make sense? So well, so well done for making that decision. If you didn't feel ready, that's the right decision. So what answers do we have? We have A's and C's. Wow, is that C from the previous question? Share it says A. Right, I've got A's and C's, I'm getting A's and C's. So this is one I didn't talk about, but this is one that's called an exam. So we need to know um, how many days. And the right answer is indeed C, right? So C is your correct answer. You stop warfarin five days before surgery. Okay, so that's the last question, people. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just a reminder that you can join our free mailing list and get all these questions for free. Share this with your friends, your colleagues. Next week, same time, same place, we're going to look at antidepressants. We're going to focus on SSRIs because the GPC likes asking questions on those as well. And um, everyone is scared of CNS. Oh, my God, I don't want to do CNS. But once you do CNS, it is fun, actually. So much fun. But um, we're going to cover this. We're going to cover SSRIs um, next week, same time, 8.30. And um, thank you all. If you enjoyed, if you have any questions, please ask me. If you found this useful, if you found this helpful, smash the like button and um, just let me know you enjoyed it, you've learned something new today. Thank you all so much. Does anyone have any question before I disappear? Thanks for the session today. You're welcome. Share it. Thank you from Amy. Thank you, Amy. My pleasure. Babisha, my pleasure. Farin, thank you for all your help and time. Learned a lot for Will. Fantastic. Farin, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I love it. Grateful juices for Amil Doran Interactions. Remember, Arsene Wenger said defeat Burnley. <laughs> Arsenal. We don't like Arsenal fans. We love Liverpool. You've got to be a Jurgen Club fan, mate. So, um, thanks from Lam Timothy Young. You're welcome. My pleasure. Helpful from Cuba. My pleasure. Grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Osa Yuki. Thank you. We're here to support you. Thank you. So excited to start the course. You will love it. Aisha, can I ask you, when are you doing your exam? Are you doing your exam in November? Just let me know. Because we have, um, for those students that are doing the exam next year for our training pharmacies, they will join the live course, which starts in October. And the live course for eight weeks. And I'm going to be doing that course with you. So live course with the calculations with Uma as well. So um, the live course for those doing it um, in, Ju in July or June 2022, those will then enroll um, by the end of this month. But yes, if you're doing it in no November, then you have the automated, so you have access to all those videos. Get you onto the Telegram group and we'll support you all the way. Kadi Ali says, is this session important for current pre-registering the exam in 2022? Kadi is asking, is this session important for current pre-registering the exam in two? Absolutely important for both. Absolutely important because this is going to come up in every exam. So this session is absolutely important for those sitting the exam in November in the next few months and also those doing the exam next year because they're still going to have the same sort of questions. But what, why I'm saying absolutely important for November is because those in November have a shorter time, okay? They have a short time to learn this because your exam is coming up soon. While those are doing it next year, they have more time to like learn more stuff. So um, that's why I remember for both years, absolutely important. So those of you that are doing the exam next year and you're on here today, I commend you. I respect you. I appreciate you because you are starting early. Many students leave it to the last minute and they start doing revision around January or February. And that's the biggest mistake you can make. I think says may know if the combo courses for November exam is live or recorded. So the combo course for November is a recorded course, right? So it is a live course. They were all live courses that were done a few months ago with live students, So, but they were then recorded, okay? So you have access. So those of you doing the exam in November, there's no time to actually do a live course. So you get the automated version. So you get all these videos all at once, okay? So it's not a live course, but it are, they are recordings of live courses. Does that make sense, Iping? So for those doing the exam in November, the live course is available on our website. You can get the live course, not some not live course, the automated course. So you have everything and then you join the Telegram group and you have access to all the information in one go. While for those of you doing the exam in 2022, you want to join the live course, which starts in October, which is eight weeks, because then you have time and then we're going to have every week, we're going to go to sessions twice a week and interact with you and support you. For those of you that want to get it for November, that's fine. Your interaction will be based, will be on the Telegram group if you have any questions, or you can email me, um, gpcscourse at gmail.com, and we will sort any questions out for you. Exciting discussion from Robbins. Thank you. Shiva says, thank you very much. 
Aisha says, how do I join the group again? Do I need to send my details? Yes, so Aisha, on your invoice, you have all the details on what to send to the um, email to be added to the Telegram group. So you have to send your telephone number and your GPC number, but you have to send that to gpccalls at gmail.com. And then the lovely Vince is going to sort it out for you, okay? So it's um, gpccalls, let me just put that there, at gmail.com. So um, you send that, um, you send out, then just look at your invoice, and your invoice has got all the details that you need to be added to the Telegram group. So what other question have I got? Um, for question number three from Amy, is the stopping work from five days before surgery standard? Yes. So um, it's five days before work from. Obviously, some people might even stop before that, but it should be at least five days just to give enough time and reduce your risk of bleeding. So five days, I would say, is the minimum. Amy, I'll say it's the minimum time, five days before um, surgery. Great for just any advice from remembering content. So when it comes to content, um, I do a lot of advice with the private duties or private group because then we'll summarize a lot of things. But um, in terms of remembering content, the first thing is you need to work hard. So there's no, there's not, you need to read, okay? You need to spend time reading stuff, making your notes. And then the best way to memorize content is obviously is using acronyms. That's why I use a lot of mnemonics throughout the combo course. Use mnemonics, right? That's going to help you to remember stuff. The more you read stuff, repetition, okay? Things go into your brain when you repeat stuff. So repetition and then the quality of your notes. So if you have notes that have the key points, right? Because you want to, and then another thing you want to do is you always start reading a summary before you read the main thing. That's what's helped me remember a lot of stuff. So say for instance, if I was to read um, something on anticoagulants, I'm going to read a summary first on anticoagulants. And then I'll dive into the real stuff. Okay, so you get summaries about say each group of drug first, the general characteristics. If you're gonna learn about SSRIs, you learn about what's common with all of them, and then you learn about them individually. But we have loads of tips, like really good tips that are gonna help you to remember a lot of stuff. Um, what else have we got? I finished. Have I missed a question? I don't want to miss anyone's question. Sorry to ask another question. Ask as many questions as you want. That's why I'm here. I'm happy to answer your questions. I love answering your questions. So I think I'm going to help you or provide some value. Griffith says, like, I finish most GI but forget content, like stomas, etc. Quite hard to remember content. Okay, so grateful juice. This is a common thing with all students. The first thing I want to tell you is that this is common. It's not just you. One of the things I get from many students all the time is, like, they read stuff and they forget stuff. And that's quite normal because there's just so much content. Even I... The reason why I remember a lot of stuff is because I've gone through it a number of times. And sometimes the best way to remember stuff is to teach, okay? So because I teach you, I remember stuff. And sometimes you have to have a friend. That's why you have to get a place like the, the Telegram group. Because on the Telegram group, for instance, you have a lot of links on there where you have summaries. You have loads of good notes. You have good summaries. You have friends that are going to show you um, little guides that can help you. All of these things help. And then you go teach someone. So it could be um, your family member, it could be anybody, or you could just act like a teacher, right? Just take this topic and go like, okay, I'm gonna write this down and let me teach this topic to somebody. So that, that idea of teaching really helps you remember stuff. Or if there's anyone that could ask you more questions while you're teaching, then it's gonna challenge you. But yes, but that is a common problem with almost all students and I have to deal with that every single day. If can't give warfarin, bridge with LMWH. Yes, yeah, so if you cannot give warfarin, majority of the time is your LMWH. That's correct. Thank you from Amy. I says, may I know if there's any private tuition group for November exam? Yes, yes, yes. So at the moment, I'm doing a few students. I have about eight in my private group. So with a private group, we try to do a very small group. So I can't do more than four at once because it's so personal. So I have a one-to-one -one private group. I could do one-to-one -one with just me and you. So I've got some students that I'm one-to-one -one with them, but then I have those that join like a private group where there's just four in each group and um, very good. So that four, we have a lot of interactions. The more practical. So those that have been on, on the combo course, you have all these notes. So you say for instance, like Grateful Juice asking how do I remember stuff. So um, when on the private groups, what we do is we do a lot of case studies. So we'll show you how to apply the information. So many times you can read stuff, but when you say past paper, you cannot answer it still, even though you've read that topic. So what we do is we try to, um, it's more practical so that you're able to answer GPX style questions. So it's getting you to habit. So a lot of questions in there, but it's very personal. We go through this um, every day, like twice a week, and uh, it's just amazing. So we have that um, course as well. 
for those doing it in November at different times. So if you wanted to enroll, for instance, then um, you can start the next enrollment will be from the end of this month. Then the next group of four, we can start the next group of four. And then um, that's going to take you all the way to your exam. But um, they're very good. The, um, the, the private sessions are just so good because it's so personal. And um, you can ask any question. And yes, it's really good. So much fun. Um, Anila says, so if you have any questions on that, um, a more questions, send me an email, send an email to GPT course, and I'll send you like, um, I've got the whole program that I can send to you and then you can see um, what the plan is. But there are about 20 sessions and those sessions cover quite good content. Um, Anila, Anila says, is the live from last week recorded? Yes, yeah, so all the sessions that we do, like the YouTube, they would then go onto the YouTube channel. That's why I keep saying to all of you to make sure you subscribe to the channel. So after this, after the session finishes, this is gonna be on the YouTube channel and you can watch this and you can watch the previous one from last week. Just go onto the YouTube channel and you can see all the videos and you can see the one from last week on there. Um, and those of you on the mailing list, that's why I said join the mailing list as well because I constantly send you emails when we're about to go live. So at least if you join the mailing list, you know you have the link for each video that you can click on anytime and watch. My know how to enroll, please. All right, Payne, if you want, um, send, send an email. I'm going to send you an email after this. So um, to gphccourts at gmail.com, right? So if you send an email now, if you're doing, especially if you're doing an exam in November, because you definitely want to go on that fiber group. So um, send an email now, and then I'll speak to Vince, and then he will send you a full program of what's covered. And then if you wanted to join, then we could arrange to add you to a group. But as I said, it's only a group of four. We cannot do more than four because it's very personalized and we want to give you the best. We really want to give you the best attention. Okay, um, so that's it. Any more questions? I'm guessing that is it, people. So um, thank you so much for today. Thank you, um, all of you. Have a lovely week. And um, next week, we're going to be doing SSRIs. I look forward to seeing all of you back on here, and then we can smash all of this again. See you soon. Bye.